the 12, 30 or over. And then Wednesday nights, probably about an hour and a half. Folks, that ain't enough time to give God through that week to serve God and live for God. And in this life that we're living in today is being committed to Christ and serving Him. Is that we got to have a daily walk with Him every day in our life and being committed to Him every day. And that is the reason that I believe that we have not seen the revival that God wants us to see because we're all time having to set our own selves to be prayed through. When we come to the house of God, we got so much in the world and this involved in the world that we live in, and, and, and there's so much out in the world. You, you take the sports entertainments today. When one, when one starts, another, when it quits, another starts. And when it starts, another, when, when it quits, another starts. Always got something involved in the world and in, in, in doing the things of the world. We have to make a living. We have to provide for our family. But the most important thing in our life is to put God first in our life. If we would put God first in our lives and we wouldn't have to be pumped and primed when we come to the house of God to worship God and praise God and, and lift his name up for what he's done in our life. In the book of Acts chapter 1, where I'm going to today, in the book of Acts chapter 1, was the acts of the apostles. I'm glad that the Lord chose them to have truth. He went and died and he gave his life and then he ascended up into heaven. I don't believe the Lord would give them a false doctrine today, false teaching today because he gave them the word of God and it was founded upon the apostles' doctrine. In the book of Acts chapter 1, it says, And the former trustees that have made of Ethiopius all that Jesus both to do and to teach. There wasn't a greater teacher in the world than Jesus Christ. I'd have loved to have been there when he, when he taught on the Mount of Olives, when he taught in the Word of God. And the Bible said he taught with authority. His, and, and they was amazed at his teaching and him even being 12 years old, astonished at the doctrines of him, how, how much learned that he was because he was, you know, in the, in the will of God. And, and, so in the, and verse 2 says, And to the day that which he was taken up, after that the Holy Ghost, after through, that he through the Holy Ghost had, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. He chose them apostles because he knew that they was not going to preach a false doctrine. In the book of Timothy, Paul said the time will come that they will not endure sound doctrine, that they will heed to themselves teachers of each year. That's the day we're living in. They're not teaching them the truth of God's word and God's plan. Jesus said out of his own mouth, he said that the blind lead the blind, they will both fall into the ditch. So it's very important in our lives to know what the plan of salvation is that even a child can understand what it is in serving God. And verse number three says, To whom also he showed himself alive after the passions by many inflammable proofs being seen of them. He was seen of them for 40 days and speaking the things was tainted to the kingdom of God. I asked this question today. Jesus was with them for 40 days. What he would have told them after he went and gave his life for them and you and I, would he give them a false doctrine? No, he would not. In the book of Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse 20 says that we're built on the foundation of apostles, prophet, and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. He is the head of the church. He is the builder, the builder and maker is God, a foundation of God. The apostle Paul wrote in the book of Corinthians, the foundation of God stands to sure that the Lord knows them that are his. It is important in our life that we be built upon a foundation, and that foundation is upon them today, upon Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. 
And being assembled together with them, commanding them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith, He you have heard of me. There's a promise in our life that God has went to way to prepare a place for each and every one of us. He gave promises to us that if we would repent of our sins, that he would give us the gift of the Holy Ghost. That is the promise to you. That he went and descended into heaven and gave gifts unto man that he's given us a gift today. The gift of eternal life is that promise to have that when he comes back, if we have that spirit of Christ living on the inside of us, we're going to be quickened in our mortal body because he's living on the inside. Christ does not live in the inside of our lives if we're not clean and if we're not righteous and seeking the things of God in our lives. We have to live like righteous lives, pleasing unto the Lord. Hard in Jerusalem, but, but wait for the promise of the Father of her to me. For John truly baptized in the water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence is that when you repent of your sins, it's a promise unto God that he's going to fill you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because it's a promise to you. In Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible says, Let us fear, lest the promise be left unto us, that any of you should seem to come short of it. The people in our world today that does not receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in their life they're stopping short of what God has in their life. Hebrews chapter number 2 and verse number 1 says, Therefore we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time that we would let them slip. What? The promises of God. We cannot let his promises depart from us. His promises are yea and amen. His promises is for you and I today. His promises are. In the book of Ephesians, chapter number 4 and verse 14, the Bible said that we henceforth be no children tossed to and fro, caring about every wind of doctrine. There's many false doctrines out in our world today, but there's only one way, that we henceforth be no children tossed to and fro, caring about every wind of doctrine in the sight of man. And it goes on to say, kindness and craftiness whereby they lie and weigh in to be deceived. Many are being deceived today because they're not telling them the plan of salvation. They're not teaching the acts of the apostles when the church began. Do you know the book of Acts has no ending at the end of it because it's still recording today? And the reason they had the great power of God in, their, in that day is, is because they didn't have the possessions that we have in our life today. And I'm not saying possessions is wrong if you put it in its priorities, put it in the right place. But if you read in the book of Acts chapter 2 and around the 42nd verse and the 43rd verse, the Bible said that they sold their possessions from house to house. The scripture said they eat meat with gladness and singleness of heart and they praise God. And the scripture said, the Lord added daily to the church such as should be saved. In Acts chapter 2, there was 120 people received the infant baptism of the Holy Ghost on that day. And so they, there was 3,000 souls added to the church daily such as should be saved. The book of Acts is still recording today. And then 5,000 souls were added. Many souls are being added right now in the kingdom of God because it has not been no ending to it yet. Because the Holy Ghost is still being poured out in the last days that we're living in this world. You know, the Holy Ghost is real. The Holy Ghost is what keeps us in serving God and living for God. In the book of Hebrews, chapter number 2, and verse number 3, it says... It says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which is the first be, be unto you spoken by the Lord and was com confirmed unto us by them that heard him? How can we escape this world and the world to come 
if we neglect the things that God has placed up in our life, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? I just said earlier the salvation plan is not hard to understand. It's a simple plan that you can read it for yourself. Acts chapter 2 said, to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 39 said, the promise is to you and, and to your children and to all that are poor off as many as our Lord our God shall call. It's a promise to you. But if we don't take earnest to the things which we've heard, we're going to let those things slip in our lives. But we need to fear lest the promise be left us to in his rest that any of us should seem to come short of it because his promises are real. The Bible said in Peter, the Lord's not slack concerning his promises, but his long suffering to us was not willing that any should perish, that all to come to repentance. The everything that God has ever wanted us to do is repent when we mess up. Turn it to the Lord. Turn to Him. That's what repentance is. It's turning around and not living that way anymore. But many times it, is that we don't have the revival that God wants us to have is simply because we're not where God wants us to be. we got to get out of our own lives, our own flesh, what we like to do. And we got to put God's things in His life and our priorities is in the right place. If we want to see the revival in the last days that God has promised in his word, he promised in the book of Joel, and he's promised in the book of Acts that he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. But we got to get ourselves out of the way. I'm talking about myself tonight too, this morning, is that we got to deny our own self, and we got to take our cross up every day and follow Jesus. It's not going to be enough to do it on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. It's going to be an everyday process to serve God and to live for God. And it ain't always going to be easy. I'm, I'm not going to tell you it is. It's not going to always be easy. But we can make it through him today. Amen. We can make it because he is on, in our life. Verse 6 says, And when therefore they were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will not at this time restore again to the kingdom to this Israel. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times and the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. I love this verse. But you shall receive power that after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you shall be witness to Jerusalem, unto, unto both of Jerusalem and all Judea and, the, and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. It is not till you receive the Holy Ghost in our lives that we have the power. What did the Word say? It said that after that the Holy Ghost comes up on you, you're going to receive power. You, know, you don't have no power to serve God when you're living in your own way and doing your own thing. But when you come and you give it to the Lord and you give your life to Christ, then you become, amen, power to overcome the things of the world. That's why Ephesians 3 and 20 said that God, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that you would think to ask, according to what? The power that worketh in you, Christ in us. Paul said Christ in you, the hope of glory. As that the only way that we can live an overcoming life is through Jesus Christ. We can't live it on our own ability, but it's through him today, through the power that he has placed up on our life. That's how we can overcome, and that's how we can be pleasing in the eyes of God. And when they had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up in the clouds to receive him out of their sight. He was taken up in the clouds to receive in the sight. John said that he went to heaven to prepare a place for each and every one of us. That's a promise we have from God in his word. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, the two men stood by them in white apparel. Those two men that stood before him was Moses and Elijah. 
that stood in that day with him on that day. Christ is going to come back for the church, like I said last week, that has made himself ready. He's coming back for a people without spot or blemish. Verse number 11 says, Which also said you, you men of Galilee, why are you standing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which you have seen taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go. He's coming back. What is he coming back for? He's coming back for the church. He's coming back for a people that has made themselves ready. It is a simple plan to serve God and live for God. It's a simple plan of salvation in our life to serve God and to live for God. Then verse number 12 said, Then return they into Jerusalem for the mount called Olive, which is from the Jerusalem, a seventh-day journey, in verse number 13 said, And when they were come in, they went up into the upper room where the both Peter, both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Aspius, and the Simon Zeladius, and Judas, the brother of James. They appeared in that upper room on the day of Pentecost. In the, in the day of Pentecost, they were in that upper room. Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. It ain't come yet. He said, I'm going to send into heaven and I'm going to send. In the gospel, he said, I'm going to, to send another comforter unto you, which is the Holy Ghost. And when that comforter's come, he's going to lead you and guide you in all truth. In a world we're living in today, Jesus told them in the gospel he said, search the scriptures, for in them that you think that you have eternal life. You've got to search out the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Second Timothy chapter number 2 and verse 15, the apostle Paul said, study that show thyself approved unto God. A workman needed not to be ashamed to rightly divide the word of truth. If you study to show thyself approved, and a workman needed not to be ashamed on the judgment day of God, is that you've got to right to divide the word of truth. And you're not going to find salvation in the Gospels. You're going to find it in the book of Acts. You find all in through the book of Romans and 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. It's telling us how to live after we receive the Holy Ghost in our life. That's what's explaining us how to live for God. But when we stand before God, we don't want to be ashamed on that day, on the judgment day of God. That's why Paul said, study the show thyself, approve unto God that a workman needed not to be ashamed. I don't want to be ashamed on that day. I want to make it. I want to serve him and I want to live for him. And the Bible said in verse 14, and they all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman in Mary. Mary was there, the mother of Jesus. She had to be born again just like everybody else did. She was in that upper room, Jesus with, with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said unto them, the number of the name together were all about 120. It was 120 people in that upper room on that day. Oh. I don't have Bible to back it, but I believe there was more than that in that upper room on that day. But here's the thing. Here's the catch in that. As the Scripture said, they were in one mind and one accord. I believe when all the unbelievers got out, it wasn't going to happen. That's when the Holy Ghost promise came on those 120 people. don't have Bible to prove it, but I, I, I've always believed that there was more than 120 there. But when they got in that mind and those 120 received the infant of the Holy Ghost in their life, do you know that's the only thing that'll change a life? Nothing else will change a life. Nothing else will help you. Verse number 16 says, Men and brethren, the scripture must need have been fulfilled, which was spoken by the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David, spoke before concerning Judas, which was. God to them that 
took Jesus, for he was numbered with us. You know, Judas detrayed the Lord. He detrayed the Lord for 30 pieces of silver just for a little bit. He detrayed the Lord for just a little. It's a waste. He went and throwed it back down to their feet because it was no good to them, no good to him. And the scripture says he went and he prayed as and he, when he was praying that the thing that he could not do, Brother Haley, is that he couldn't forgive him his own self. He didn't do no more than what Peter did. Peter denied the Lord. Jesus told him for the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me, Peter. But Cedar, uh, Peter found repentance within him. He found repentance. He sought repentance, and he found it. But Judas went out and hung himself because he couldn't find no repentance. And then he had attained part of the ministry. In verse number 18 said, Now this, the man purchased the field, reward of iniquity, fallen headlong. He burst as under the midst of all of his bowels gushed out. Old Judas didn't carry anything. You know, it was in the Old Testament that Esau had a birthright. Here's the thing. You do not separate the birthright from the blessing. They all automatically come together. Jacob wanted Esau's birthright. Esau was hungry, and Jacob was making some soup. And you know the story how that he was hungry. He said, no, if you give me your birthright, I'll give you a bowl of this soup. And so he changed it. They he gave him his birthright for that suit. Did you know that the Bible says that God hated Esau? He hated him. Because why? He sold his birthright. He didn't care anything about his birthright. You say, well, God loves. Yeah, he hates too. There's things that God hates. And the scripture said he hated Esau because he sold his birthright. Your birthright is all in manic, you're yours. And the blessings are automatically yours. That's why the scripture says in the book of Proverbs 23 and 23, it says, buy the truth and sell it not. Wisdom, instructions, and understanding. What understanding we need in God is in his word and his plan in our life that it's a simple plan. It's easy to understand. It ain't something that you have to scratch your head about what God expects out of us is it's to do what he chose them men, those 12 apostles, to follow him. And they followed him, and he made them what they are today, men of great faith. They went through the storms of life. They went through troubles of life. They were put in prison. They was beheaded. They was shipwrecked. They was snake bit. They was, went through all of these things in their life. But when they sat down and they count the cost that it's not going to be what, when I get to heaven, the reward that I'm going to have, what I'm going through in this life. It's going to be a great day, church, a great day when we go home to be with Jesus. And it was known unto the dwellers of Jerusalem so much as the field was called that the prospering tongue tongue, I can't pronounce this word, y'all can say this word, I can't say it, Akadama, I say I, I may not be pronouncing it right, and that is to say the field of blood, you know, without his blood in our life, we have no life, if you read the book of Leviticus 17 and verse 11, the scripture says the life of the flesh is in the blood. It is the blood that make atonement for our soul. It is the blood of Jesus that washes away our sins, calling on his name. Verse number 20 said, For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let the inhabitants of the desolate, and let no man dwell therein, in his bishopry, let another take. What well, for of these? men which have compounded with us all the time 
that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Beginning from the baptism of John into the same day that was taken up from much one be ordained. He ordained these ministers to preach the gospel. I say unto you this morning, if you would give your life for the whole world and you died on the cross of Calvary, would you give them men a false doctrine? No, you wouldn't. He would have gave them the truth of God's word. John 14, in verse number 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man cometh to the Father but by me is through him. He is the only way to heaven. He is the only way that we can enter into the kingdom of God to be a witness with us of his resurrection. That is the only hope that we have today is in his resurrection and serving him and living for him that Jesus died and buried and he rose again the third day. Verse number 23 says, And they appointed unto Joseph called Barnabas, who was surnamed Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, The Lord had was known as the hearts of all men Show whether of these two thou hast chosen. You know, God chosen you. He chosen you to serve him and to live for him. He chose you to walk in a new life and serving him and, and, and being obedient to him and his word. In verse number 25 says that he may take part of the ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place. He fell. They say today you can't fall from the grace of God. He fell. He was an apostle chosen by Jesus. And they say today you can't fall. Jesus said, if you look back, you ain't fit for the kingdom of God. Did Jesus said, any man grab a hold of the plow and look back. It's not fit for the kingdom of God. And the Bible tells us in the book of Ezekiel that if we turn our back on God, that he won't even remember the good things that we've done. And like the prodigal son that left his father's house, he had to go back to his father's house. If he hadn't went back to his father's house, he would have still been lost. They need to read what the Word says. They need to read that Judas betrayed the Lord and somebody else took his place. They need to read the book of Revelations where God said that your name will be blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. They need to read the whole chapters, the whole book, not part that they like, but they need to read the whole word of God in their life. Amen. They need the word of God in their life. They need the Holy Ghost most of all in their life, which they don't have. They need the Holy Ghost in their life. And they gave forth their lots, and lots fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Somebody would take my place. If I go back into the world that I was in and serve in the things that I used to serve, the Bible said that I will be worse in the day of my beginning of my life. That's what the good book said. It said that a dog would go back to the vomit and a pig would go back to the water. We got to be born again, and we got to have his presence in our life if we're going to make heaven our home in our life. We need to search the scriptures. Jesus said, search the scriptures. For in them that you think that you have eternal life. To search it out every day in our lives, to serve God and to live for God. It is all in the book of Acts. Many of them in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 3, when Peter and John went to the temple and prayed in the hour of prayer, and they found, them, they found a man lame from his mother's womb, and, and the man said, asked him to receive something for the Lord, and Peter and John said, silver and gold, I have none, but I got something to give you. I got something on the inside of me that you can have. I can't give it to you, but the Lord can give it to you 
It's a promise that's coming down the road. The promise is, is yours and mine today. All we got to do is obey God's word and his plan in our life, and we can receive his promises in our life today. But they was to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise. You know, sometimes we don't like waiting. I don't like waiting. I want it done right then and right now. But sometimes we have to learn to wait. Wait upon the Lord. The Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And we will have our strength renewed. But the scripture says in Acts chapter number 5 that the apostles was put in prison for preaching the gospel. They had chains and they was bound in prison. And the scripture says that they was outside of the prison preaching the word of God. Tell me how they was out. The gate is locked. The, the prison cell is, is chained down, locked down. They're outside preaching the gospel. Why? Because they was not bound. They might... The, they might have bound them, but they weren't bound by the Lord. All through the Gospels, and many of them that has, and many times, even through the disciples in Acts 19, that when they had came and they was baptized, and they was, they was re-baptized. But why? Because they wasn't baptized in the right way. They said, how was you baptized? And they said, we were baptized in John's baptism. He said, there's one come in mind him, my shoes are not worthy to step down and loose. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And when they was baptized in Jesus' name, the Holy Ghost came on their life. In Acts chapter 8, the Holy Ghost wasn't falling on none of them until they was baptized in Jesus' name. And then the Bible said they laid hands on them. They received the Holy Ghost. Why? Because it's a promise. At Cornelius' household, they say today, oh, he was a good man. She was a good woman. Being good, that's not good enough. Being a good person is not good enough. Cornelius was a good man. His whole household, the Bible said, he prayed to God always. But who did, he, who did the Lord send? He sent Peter. Why? Because he had the keys to the kingdom. to unlock the door. And he preached that great message to them. And the whole household at Cornelius' household received the infant of the Holy Ghost in their life. They went on at the last verses of that scripture in Acts chapter 10, and they said, Can any man forbid these which have received the Holy Ghost to not yet be baptized? And Peter said, I command you all to be baptized. It's important to be baptized in Jesus' name. He's the one that went and died on the cross. He's the Father. He's the Son and the Holy Ghost. Do it right. Do it in the name of Jesus. The scripture said in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 11, it said, This is a stone was set to knock to your builders, which come the head of the corner, that neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved other than that name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the only name that we can be saved under. We don't take away from the Father. We don't take away from the Son. We know who he is. It's Jesus. Jesus told them, said, have I not been so long with you that you don't even know who the Father is? And, they, and he said, suffice us us and show us the Father. Jesus said, I've been with you a long time. You don't even know who the Father is. Jesus said, he that's seen me has seen the Father. I and my Father are one. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. There's not but one way to heaven. There's many religions in the world today. There's many philosophies of men today, but there's only one gospel. There's only one plan of salvation, and we have to get it right in our life. I don't read no word in the Bible that is changed. No word. I don't read no word through the scripture that the word of God has changed. Jesus, the Bible said in Hebrews chapter number 11, the Bible said that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13 and 8. That Jesus Christ is the same 
He does not change. People change. Their ideals and their opinions have changed. But the word of God does not change. His word will stand forever and it will not fall. His word is going to stand. I want to stand up on his word this morning, don't you? I want to live by his word. If his word tells me to be baptized, I want to be baptized. If his word tells me to repent, I want to repent. If his word tells me I want to be, to be filled with the Spirit of God, I want the Spirit of God living on the inside of me. Why? Because you don't have the power of God to live for God on your own, and I don't either. But through him, we can do all things. And we receive the power of God in our life that after that the Holy Ghost comes upon us. You read all, all through the book of Acts. They begin to sell their goods. They sold their possession. And they laid it down at the apostles' feet. You read it in the book of Acts chapter 5. Peter came to Ananias and Sapphire, and he told him, he asked him, he said, did you sell the land for so much? And they said, yes, yeah, so, for so much. And she fell dead. And then just a few hours later, three hours later, her husband came. I sold the land for so much, and then he fell dead. Why? Because the Bible said the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. They had a lie. They told the field. They didn't tell the truth. We are not to build our lives. The scripture says that all liars are find their part in the lake of fire. All liars. Someone said, I just told a little bitty lie. Well, they all lie. They all lie. So if you told it, it's, all liars are not going to go to heaven. I want to make it, don't you? And if we're going to make it, we're going to have to go by the acts of the apostles. We're going to have to go by what they taught, what they teach, and what they preached. You know, Jesus was with them. He was a great teacher. He taught them for 40 days. And then he ascended up into heaven. He would not give them something, a false religion, false teaching. The Bible tells us in the book of Peter that in the, in the last days that there would be scoffers and not, they would come and deny the power therein. There would be false prophets and false teachers. Oh, they wear suits and they wear ties. Oh, they, they, they go to the place every time the doors is open. But they're going to be false teachers, the Scripture tells us. It is you and I in our life today that I don't want to take nobody's word but the word of God. If they preach in the word of God and they live in by the word of God, that is what we go by. Amen. I'm thankful for God and his word today. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise up in his house this morning. It is in the house of God that we can find the peace and joy in our lives. So many, I was talking to a man yesterday and he said, the reason I don't go to church is I can't hear. I said, well, you go to Walmart and you go to General and everywhere else. Why can't you go to church? I'm telling you, church, if we get our heart right with God, we want to be in the house of God. We want to live by the word of God and serve him and do his plan in our life today. I want to make it, don't you? We can't make it without coming to the house of God and being in the church of the living God. There's only one church of the living God, and I want to be in that number. Today. I'm going to turn to service to our pastor today. Say, God bless our pastor. He was up here yesterday putting all them lights in. Man, he was way up in there. And I said, Oof. I'm going to be like the scripture said, Lord, I'll be with you always to the end of the world. Did y'all enjoy that this morning? Don't you appreciate Brother Rogers? The reason the book of Acts is so important is it is an example for us to follow. Uh, not just Christ, but he tells us, to watch the works of the apostles and watch what they did, and that gives us an example. Uh, the book of Acts, as, as Brother Rogers probably touched on, that is the beginning of the church. Uh, that's the first start when they come together. God poured out his spirit in a brand new way, and they uh, began the church together. 
Listen, I'm going to tell you, if we're not having church like they had in the book of Acts, we're not doing it right. You know what Jesus told his disciples? He said, greater works than I do, you shall do. And that's how we must know. A lot of people look at the uh, works that Jesus did when he was uh, walking the earth, and we think, man, they just, he just done that because he's Jesus. But Jesus told them, you shall do greater things than me. I'm going to tell you, God has not uh, built a church to be an ordinary building, but he has built a church to be a building filled with extraordinary individuals that love him and that work in the giftings of the Spirit. Uh, we've got a great day uh, planned here today. Of course, we've got our baby dedication Sunday. And it's not just a uh, regular dedication. We have three baby dedications uh, this morning. I figure it's just better to knock them all out at one time and uh, just get them all up here. And, you know, we love seeing one baby, but we're going to get to see three pretty babies. Aren't you thankful for how God's growing the church?